Let me welcome you. Wake up, pray, and start the day. Let me welcome you. This is how I do. Let me welcome you. Finish up the day and pray. Let me welcome you. This is how I do. Let me welcome you. What now? Say, can't you see I'm doing something? Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me, Future Bishop. I'm glad to be here one more time, man. I'm live from Panama City, Florida. Glad to be back. I'm looking better than ever. Uh, the weather is great out here, man. Spend a little time on the beach and whatnot. So you're in the valley with Future Bishop, and today's video is going to be specifically talking about in the valley. I decided to make this thing a series, and it's going to go into a couple of parts about being in the valley and how to get out of it. Um, I figure because uh, I spent a lot of time in the valley earlier this year, you know, so that I'm actually trying to come out of the valley that I'm actually excited to be here again, man. As you can see, I look and feel a little bit better. So uh, uh, favorites on my side, man. God has blessed me to be here. So, man, let's jump right into it. All right. One of the biggest things that we don't when we talk about the valley, we forget about how we got to the valley. So let's take a trip. Just imagine that you're on a road and you're headed to a direction or a future that you want to get to. And this is something that you you've planned, something that uh, you set your sights on, you made your mind up, and you're just trying to get there. So let's, let's just focus on that. You're headed there, you're focused on your objectives, you're focused on your purpose, and you're focused on what you're called to be. And next thing you know, you look up, and all these mountains are surrounding you, both in front, behind you, on the side of you, and diagonally. And you're trying to figure out how in the world did I get all these mountains in front of me impeding my progress? Sometimes we get so focused on what we're trying to do and what we have to do that um, that we don't we don't we don't see the mountains forming in front of us and we walk right into what we call the valley. Now that we're in this valley, we become you know worrisome about oh man, am I going to get there on time? Am I going to make it? Am I going to uh, get out of this valley? How long am I going to be here? And we spend so much time trying to figure out those things, but. What I want you to understand is that sometimes we have to sit in that valley because if we move too quick, it can cost us. It can set us back way, 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 way further than we want to be. I know the valley is not the most prime place to be. It's not exciting. It's, it, it's, it's a place of solitude. You're there by yourself. But sometimes we get so caught up in being there by ourselves, loneliness set in and stuff like that and feeling like we're, uh, we can't accomplish what we need to accomplish that we miss the message and we miss what the valley is really all about. Uh, so this is the biggest thing. I want to give you a different perspective or a perception about being in the valley. I told you you're sitting in this valley. I didn't, and all you can see on all sides are all the mountains, right? Now look at it like this. The only thing that you see is one side of that mountain. That's all you see. You don't know what's on the other side of that mountain. You don't, don't know what's going on and stuff like that. So try to have a different perspective about that mountain because, believe it or not, mountains take on a lot of different stuff. We're, we're animals too, just like the animals in the mountains and stuff like that. But this survival nature, animals will go to the other side of the mountain for protection. And when there's an avalanche, inclement weather or something like that, then sitting on that particular side of the mountain, and where their life is in danger and stuff like that. So think about it. Hey, if I'm in this valley, what am I being protected from? What is what is uh what is my purpose here? What else is going on? Okay, guess what? I'm in this valley. You know what I'm saying? It gives me time to think about certain things. It is stopping me from going a little bit further because guess what? If I go a little bit further, guess what? That may cost me my job. It can cost me my family. It can, and, and it can also cost me my life. So sometimes we just have to take what, what's in that valley and just sit there and say, okay, man. What is what is what is what is what is really going on here? Why am I here? You know what I'm saying? You gotta focus on that aspect. Now, the one thing I want you to get to understand about is this about the valley. Getting through it is possible. Sometimes we when we're in the valley, man, we don't think it's possible to get out the, the, the stuff that we in. And sometimes the valley is not on our own fruition. It's not on our own mistakes and stuff like that. It's just some things happen to good people. And if you let me tell you something, what I've learned, if you're not doing anything good then the devil, life has no reason to mess with you. So if you, you know you're on the right track, you're, you're, you're positive, uh, uh, you're, you're putting good karma out there, then guess what? You're going to meet trials and tribulations because guess what? Just by law of nature, you got to meet some type of opposition in order for you to grow. Think about it. For me, I, I work out all the time. Think about it. I cannot grow unless I have some type of resistance. Some type of where I have to push and, and, and pull through some type of particular pain or some type of discomfort. Think about the valley as like, you know, uh, 
It's, it's, it's a little discomfort. It's a little painful. It's a little lonely. But guess what? It's only for me to grow. I, I've gotten to where now, man, I've learned over the years, man, that I've got excited about sometimes being in the valley. And I, sometimes I forget. I got to remind myself, like, wait, wait a minute, Wes. Hold on one second. I know you're crying. I know you're depressed. I know, you know, life is, is messing with you right now. But think about and get excited about what's coming next. I know it may not be tomorrow. It may not be the next month, but something big is about to happen. And typically when something big is about to happen, it's because you've went through something to get there. You know, um, and then see, the thing is, is sometimes being in the valley, it's a, it's a rest period. Sometimes you got to take that moment because, I mean, think about it. I'm a father. You know what I'm saying? I'm always on the go. I'm a flight attendant. You know what I'm saying? I do motivational speaking and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm always on the go in the gym and so on and so forth. Think about it. Sometimes we need that rest period. Sometimes we need to be in the valley because we need to be able to sit down and think about what's my next move. It was my next move, my best move. So you have to be able to think about that as well. So but always remember, you can get through it, regardless of what type of mountain it is, how big it is, how small it is, whether you cover it on all sides. If you're in the valley, you can get through it and start getting excited about, hey, what's coming up? Okay, I know I'm in this valley. You know what I'm saying? I, I know, you know, I'm struggling financially right now, but I guarantee you there's a promotion in my job that's coming. Okay, you know what? I, mean, I, I that, that relationship ended pretty bad, but guess what? My wife or my husband or whatever, they're coming because that one just wasn't the one for me so you got to get excited about the one that's coming because guess what that one had to be removed in order for you to move forward and be grateful for what you're doing always reflect about what did you do in the past to help you get here what did you learn how did you grow those are the things that you got to focus on while you're in the valley so now let me give you a personal testimony all right uh, again y'all understand i'm a father you know so i'm a big 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 thing on father advocacy and stuff like that and us fighting for our rights as far as for kids okay so now let me tell you something father's day weekend i had my children all right you know we had a good time i went and barbecued with my frat brothers and stuff like that it was an awesome time my uh my eight-year-old he'll be nine uh in september he sold his pants while we were out so unfortunately you know uh, and let me let me just be frank here let me be transparent as a father you know what i'm saying and knowing what you have to deal with whatever clothes you get on friday whatever your day is you just got to send them back in the same clothes because you know it, it's just a bunch of mess anyway so i was trying to send him back in the same clothes that his mom sent me but he saw those clothes while we were out he took a nap ate good sold his clothes okay now, the clothes that I bought that particular weekend, I put on his body. Now, as a father, you know what I'm saying? You don't want your son to be on some soiled clothes going back home, knowing what you're dealing with. Now, put him on these clothes, okay? Now, put him on these clothes. His mom get there. She's upset about, well, where is his old clothes? And I said, well, they're in the truck. They're sold. I'll wash them, and I'll give them back to you when I get the kids on this particular day. No, I want the clothes now, so on and so forth. Okay, big debacle, big, 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 big argument, all that stuff about soil clothes at our meeting place. Next thing you know, it's my time to get the kids. Guess what? My kids aren't there. I'm like, well, wait a minute. What's going on? I go a month without seeing my kids. Find out she placed a restraining order out on me against my kids. She went there and told them that, hey, I put, uh, uh, I had soil clothes with my kids on and stuff like that. And I chopped my kids in the throat and so on and so forth. Let's get one thing straight. Capital punishment, if that's your thing, do your thing. See me, I was in the Marine Corps, so I know how to put, play games without having to put my hands on you. It's one thing I'm not going to do. And I'm not going to sit here and be huffing and puff, puffing, chasing the kid around. You know what I'm saying? So, Didn't I tell you? <laughs> I'm more tired than they are. Uh-uh. Nope. Not going to happen. So guess what? I find ways to make sure that we have a conversation and you understand that I can put pain on your body through exercise. Let's be clear. I do not beat my kids at all. Through exercise to where I can get the message to you and you can learn from what, you, from what you're going through. Okay? So I had to go to court and all this other good stuff because she and put a restraining order out on me. All because she does not want me to see my children. That's what it really boils down to. Now, as a father, as a father, we're not talking about anybody. We're talking about the ones that really honestly care about being with their kids. It hurts. It, I'm talking about it hurts when you can't see your children. For a whole month. Took my whole summer away. But we went to court. We saw a social worker. They talked to me. I gave them the truth. And guess what? We went back. And they said, I didn't even have to say a word. I didn't have to talk to the judge. I didn't say anything. Social worker was like, hey, man, he's a good dude. He really, he really, his kids miss him. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't believe none of this stuff to be factual. We're going to move it. Now, guess what? Now, if I would have said some stuff myself, I probably would have talked myself in a hole. Let's just be honest. But sometimes you have to allow God, because I'm a Christian, you have to allow God to speak for you. Also, uh, or whoever you believe in, you have to allow them to speak for you or your karma to speak for you. I know we got a lot of people out there that does does not believe in Christianity or whatever case it be and the atheists and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, man, karma is something else, man. If you put out positive energy in this world, you're going to get something back and it's going to speak for you when you're in a, in a tough situation. So being in that particular valley, if I would have said something, I would have been stuck in that valley and not even able to see my kids for a year. But guess what? I didn't say anything. I, as a Christian, I got down on my knees. I prayed. I cried. I talked to some of my counselors, some of my closest friends that helped me get through it. I spent four days in London and all that good stuff, man, just trying to get my mind together. And guess what? It worked out in my favor. So that was one part of the valley that I was able to come out of. But I'm still, we're still in the valley. But what you got to understand is, is that sometimes it's, it's important for us to be there. And sometimes we have to allow our good deeds to speak for us. So again, man, Think about, though, the perception. Think about why you're there. Don't move too quick. Sometimes it takes that time to relax. Think about and, and, and be intentional about what your next plan is, why you're in the valley. Again, man, I appreciate you guys following me, man. This is Future Bishop uh, just coming at you one more time, man. If you like the video, man, definitely comment below. And don't forget to follow me at Future Bishop on Instagram and definitely on my Facebook at West Trey Albright, man. I appreciate everyone for following me and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I hope I was able to, to reach to uh, any fathers out there, to reach anyone that is going through a valley. We can get through this thing together. And always remember, man. You can get through it, regardless of what type of valley it is, no matter how long it is, how long you've been there, regardless, so there's going to be something in that valley that you can learn from, and I promise you, you will never be there alone, and you will never come out the same. Again, I enjoy being in front of you guys today. I hope you guys are well. Be blessed. I love you, and I'll talk to you again.